Hi everyone. So everyone who has a Harry Potter collection needs a mandrake. Simple as that. The first mandrake I made was for my Harry Potter Hogwarts party quite a few years ago, but he was front and center in my herbology section of the party. I thought I'd make him a little partner to go with him. This one's gonna be a little bit larger just so I can show you a bit more detail. Look, I'm gonna show you as best as I can um, my whole process. So I've already kind of edited it down. You guys can jump through. I'm going to try to do commentary as much as I can through it to explain how I'm doing things. I will also do a little short version and pop it up onto Facebook for those who just want a quick and easy, this is how she's done it. Now, before we get started, uh, make sure you hit the like button. It's one of the ways that YouTube knows that this video is interesting and might want to show it to others. So make sure you hit like, and then after that, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do, otherwise you will lose me down the YouTube rabbit hole. So to start, you are going to need newspaper, masking tape, um, two packages of air dry clay. You are going to need plaster of Paris bandages. And then you're also going to need paints in burnt umber, raw umber, and a sienna color. Um, I also use a little bit of a, it's like a yellowy color, kind of like a gold for a little bit of highlights at the end. But you can kind of pick and choose your colors. But basically you're wanting a medium brown, um, something for highlights, and something for the shadows. You're also going to need some fake foliage. Um, I've used ferns for mine, um, but you might find different types of leaves or something that you find is much more mandrake-like. Finally, for its little fingers and legs, um, you are going to need roots. Um, so I actually have just some old plants that I was gonna tear up, so you will want to check, especially if you're a teenager, check with your parents before you pull anything out of the ground, please. But what you're going to want to do is pull those out, give them a really good shake with the um, to make sure any dirt is off, and you are going to let those dry for a little bit before you actually use them. The reality is, is that this project does take a while because you're going to need air dry time um, for the clay, and you might want to do this in stages with the painting and so on. Um, so with that, um, yeah, give the roots a few days to dry before you use them. As for tools, I pretty much just use my fingers. Um, my nails, my fingers, um, you might want to get some pens or small little bits and pieces, but to be honest, you really don't need anything special with this. It's pretty affordable, um, so anyone can give making a mandrake a shot. And with that, let me show you how to make a mandrake. Okay, so what we're starting with here is we're making the frame basically out of newspaper and masking tape. So you're going to take lots of newspaper and you're going to scrunch um, a ball together and then you're going to want to get an oval shape for the body. Um, make sure it's kind of the, the sizing you want. I'm making mine a little bit larger so you can kind of see in comparison to what my hands are um, how much I've got. And then once you start doing the masking tape, it's going to tighten that down as well. So you're gonna take your masking tape and just start to wrap. Um, if it's, look, your first go at this isn't gonna be perfect. You are gonna want more newspaper or extra paper on the side because you're probably gonna build up the body as you go. Um, at least that's what I did. So as you can see, I am just taking lots of masking tape and I'm just gonna wrap, wrap, wrap until I've got a really tight ball for the head. Okay, so I'm just popping the head and the body together. Then you're gonna grab another sheet of newspaper. Um, here I'm just grabbing some masking tape and attaching the head to the body. Um, and then I'm going to basically create like a, a neck wrap so I can start attaching the head and the body properly so it's um, more formed. Um, so you've got more of a neck structure going on. Again, more masking tape. Um, try not to get things stuck. I lay down plastic underneath, not so much for this point, but when I start doing the clay, it gets very messy. Okay, so as you can see, he is kind of like oval shaped, but you really want him to have what I call the Grinch belly. So um, if he doesn't have that Grinch belly, grab more newspaper, start scrunching it up, adding it on top. This is a nice thing with masking tape and newspaper. You can just keep adding until you get the shape you want. Um, and if you've added too much, scissors. All right, so this part we are using few sheets of newspaper. You're gonna wrap them together. So it just adds a little bit of firmness and you are making the arms. And once you have a few sheets, I think I had about three or four here just for the, for the arm set, um, take masking tape and just start wrapping that so it tightens it. Now the ends, you're gonna start to um, 
get your, your hands and finger pieces together. Um, so I just tear them. Um, I like going for odd numbers, so three or five for the ends. Um, grab masking tape, so you're gonna tear it and then use masking tape to tie it or tape that really tightly together. Um, in most of these cases, I also make sure the masking tape is longer and I start twisting the masking tape into itself and it creates that really fine, fine point at the end. Um, so when we go to add the, the roots as like the final piece, um, it's nice and dainty and works quite well with it. All right, so as you can see, it is completely wrapped up. Now, what I've also done here is I've just wrapped two of the fingers because Look, this is nature, this is roots. Not everything comes out all at one point. So um, if you actually look at roots or flowers or whatever, they kind of gradually come out. So some of them I've just sort of taped together so they come out a little bit further than at the, at the join. As you can see, you can, this is the nice thing with masking tape, you can just wrap and add longer pieces if you feel some of them are too short. And you just kind of just keep adding until you're happy with the little fingers that you've got. Okay, so once you finish that part, you are going to attach the arms. Now, when you're attaching them, you're not gonna put the arms up near the neck. Your, the arms are going to drop lower. So just remember that. Um, so bring them a little bit lower and you're going to take more masking tape and basically create a, a zigzaggy cross um, to um, attach it to the body. So that way, once you start adding a bit more, um, you're gonna start creating shoulders instead of having the arms coming out where your neck is. Now I should also mention, now the first mandrake I did, I didn't do it with this guy. I actually used some wire. Um, so if you're wanting to shape arms and get them to wrap around or do different shapes, um, and get them into the right position so they stay put, now is the time. So just add, um, just, you can get some sort of metal from, metal wire from um, a hardware store or a craft store, and you can slide that in or sort of tape that, um, again with masking tape, and um, that way you can shape them so the arms come out or up or whatever. Now, this part, we are creating the, I don't even know what it is, it's just like the, the stems for the mandrake. So you are going to scrunch um, two, so you're gonna tie two of the newspaper pieces together. You're gonna to put them into a cross. Um, you're gonna have three of these coming out. So one of the ends, as you can see, I'm just folding around for a little bit of stability and creating sort of a, um, a flat base. And then I'm just grabbing some masking tape and um, just attaching it so it holds all together. Then, because as you can see, it's nice and flat now. Well, I keep wrapping a little bit of masking tape so they are secure. We're going to plunk this onto the top of his head. Just like that. Um, flip it around, see where you want to have the little stems coming out. Um, and then just take some more masking tape, attach it. And to be honest, it doesn't matter how you tape this, just so long as it's secure. Um, you might want to tape it down and across and then wrap it around a few times. Um, whatever works so long as it's not gonna pop off. Um, in saying this, we are also adding other layers. So this is really just to kind of help hold it in place um, as we build up the layers on top of that. At this point, we just kind of finish off his stems. Okay, now that you've done the arms, we are going to do the exact same thing for the feet. Um, so you, as you can see, I ran out of newspaper at this point, and look, any paper works, um, so long as you can wrap it together and make a nice long piece. So again, you're just gonna scrunch your paper and use masking tape and just um, tighten all the paper together, and then you've got your mandrake legs. All right, so at this point, as you can see, the mandrake arms are looking a little scrawny. Um, so we're just gonna take more paper and um, more masking tape and just start to fill him out. You know, as you can see with an arm, it starts bigger and goes smaller and the mandrake's, the mandrake's not gonna be any different. Um, so you're just gonna keep plumping him out a bit until he's um, looking a bit more like a plump baby. So 
So obviously I thought he still wasn't chubby enough, so I am adding more paper to his belly. I basically just keep adding it up, as I've said, you know, if you get it right the first time, that's great. If not, just keep adding layers. Um, but you do kind of want to make sure that his base is um, good now because once you start putting on the plaster of Paris and the clay, um, you don't really want to be creating thick layers of that because it's going to get quite heavy and also gets a bit more costly. Um, and definitely working with the paper and the masking paper and the masking tape is so much easier. All right, I think he's good. He's got a nice chubby little body there. So our next stop is to do plaster of Paris. So for this, you're going to need a bowl of water and you're going to need plaster of Paris bandages. I um, can't remember how many you use. I might have used one, might have needed two. I always like to have two on hand just in case. Um, I cut them to size so they're about like yay big. Um, and then you are going to dip these in the bandages in water one at a time. Um, some of them you might want to cut down to smaller sizes, but you are going to stick it into water, sort of smooth out some of the water, and you're just going to um, wrap it and just use your hands, make sure they're nice and wet, um, and smooth the bandages so it's really as smooth as you can get with the, with the plaster. And you're going to do that until the whole little body is covered. So this is why it's important to make sure your mandrake is exactly how you want it to be. Um, arm placement and whatever, because once you start getting this stuff on, that's it. It's, you can't really do anything to change the shape afterwards without breaking clay and plaster and so on. Now I will note with the plaster, um, with it comes to the hands and the feet of the mandrake, I actually don't go all the way to the end. I kind of get to a certain point just where the, um, the hands are starting to um, turn into the roots um, and I stop about there. Um, I find that with a little bit of color and those roots, um, there's no need for the plaster to go any further and also gets a little complicated to, to work in that because it thickens it. Um, so you kind of go to basically the wrists and the ankles of the mandrake with the plaster. Now when I'm doing the, I guess I'm calling them stems of the mandrake, um, I only go to a certain point um, again and I kind of make sure it's chopped and I'm going to be sticking st scissors and making sure there's a gap because we're going to be putting the ferns and foliage in afterwards. Okay. Clay, yes, make sure you take your rings off or whatever because they will get very gunky. Um, it doesn't matter what color you use, you're gonna be painting on top of this, so whether you've got white or this ready color, no big deal. Um, I like to wet it, it just makes it easier and you're gonna work in small batches. I cover basically the whole body with this. Um, I try to do, I guess, one to two centimeters thick um, around the whole thing, but I am working in sections. So as you see, we're going to work on the face first um, and you're going to see, I'm not going to talk through the whole thing, but it is about five minutes and I am just going to leave it here for you guys. Um, so you can see how I do my mandrake face. Um, as you can see, I'm doing this in sections. I try to thin out the edge while I'm, um, so I can push it down easier. And I'm just using the back of my thumb and just smoothing that in. Um, your hands do get sore eventually, which is why I say you might want to do this in stages. Um, if you get tired and you want to keep it damp, just wrap them the whole thing in cling wrap. Um, just make sure it's a little moist, but not too, too wet. Um, and that way you can come back to it and keep adding to it. So I'm not really sure how I can describe sculpting a face. As I said, it's not my area, um, but I will say um, here are some basics. So as you can see, I'm drawing a line down the middle. And I'm drawing a line in the middle because that's actually where your eyes are. Your eyes are not actually up near the top of your head. They're actually in the middle in comparison. So I'm gonna be using that as a bit of a base. And as you can see, I'm kind of just marking where my nose is gonna be and also the mouth. Um, make sure you've got some references. Either look at the Harry Potter movies and take some photos of the mandrakes that are in there. Um, or if you're wanting to make your own mandrake face, so I would say just bring out your camera and your phone and take some selfies pulling faces. So my little guy eventually is going to be doing this ah face, as awesome as that looks. 
and you're gonna see um, where everything is, the way the eyes scrunch, the fact that this guy is going to have his um, cheekbones a little bit higher and the face curves in a little bit more when he's doing that. And also um, the deep grooves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so look, take photos because it's going to be a whole lot easier to kind of measure where things are going to be. And also if his mouth is open, where you're going to want it to drop open to. Um, and it'll just look a bit more realistic if you've got something just as a reference. So yeah, I gave these guys a little bit of um, oh, the hooded lid. Um, look, this took me quite a while. And like, as you're gonna see, I keep going back and I just keep playing with the face and changing things. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Um, just keep at it until you find a face that you are happy with. As I said, I'm just gonna leave this here for the next few minutes while you watch me making the face. Um, and then we'll, I'll continue the commentary. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. So um, once I'm, once you're pretty much happy with the face, I just use my nails and I create a rough texture and I just go back and forth, um, not too much, but just enough where you're gonna get um, just like this scratchy kind of bark look. That's how I'm kind of seeing it. Um, anyways, I cover his whole face with that. Um, I would say, I didn't do it here. I was a bit rushed with this one, but the um, my first mandrake I made, I made sure he had like all the right creases around the eyes and around the mouth. Um, so it made him look a little bit more realistic. As you can see, I'm still adding bits and pieces. So, you know, look, if you're still not happy with it and you're still going along, you can always come back. Um, so long as it's still damp, um, the clay, you can just keep working at it or adding bits and pieces. I did the face first because that's obviously the more difficult part. The rest of it, it's pretty straightforward. It does take a little bit of time, but basically you're just gonna take clay and make it slightly thin. As I said, probably, I guess, a centimeter thick. Um, and you're going to cover the whole body with that. And look, once you get to the end of covering the body, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing, but again, you're gonna do the same thing with the nails um, to create the whole texture along. 
So as you can see, um, this part is dry. I've cut off the tops. Again, we're talking the mandrake stems. I'm taking a scissor and just plunking it through the hole because that way it's got space. Um, so when we do the ferns, I'm obviously just finishing this off, um, so the ferns can go in. Okay, he's all dry, ready to go. He's looking like he's cracked a little bit, so I might fix that up later. Um, but I am taking a little bit of masking tape. I've taken these roots, they are now dry and I am going to tape them to the end of his fingers. So as you can see, the plaster kind of finishes around where the wrist is. All I've actually done, um, and I forgot to show this, um, I really just take like watered down clay, so it's really just the coloring, and I've just covered um, his the, the roots, the masking tape, just to make sure that color is consistent. And basically you do that until all the roots are attached on both, um, both hands and both little feet. And then you're gonna add the paint. Okay, so I've got the colors here. So I've got a burnt sienna, any sort of like um, an ashy yellow would work quite well. Um, this is for the highlights at the end. Um, but the main colors are raw umber and burnt umber. Um, I've also got, it's always good to have some black and some white. That way you can change the depth of your brown colors that you're wanting. Um, I just use all sorts of different brushes. It doesn't really matter. You want something big enough, um, but basically I'm just mixing some of these colors until I get it right. The first batch I did, I did more of that burnt sienna, which kind of wasn't what I wanted. I found it was a little bit too ready. Um, and it goes to show, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, you can just let it dry and then you go over top with another color. So I ended up going with a much more of a raw umber with just a hint of that burnt sienna mixed in. Um, I ended up mixing that together and using that as my base. So this color you're wanting is kind of your mid-tone. Um, so you're gonna choose a light color, a medium color, and a dark color. So at the moment, I am starting with that medium color and covering the whole mandrake. So see, this is the color I ended up going with. It was like that mix of the burnt sienna um, and that raw umber. As you can see, I'm just doing a rough job. It doesn't need to be perfect. I've added a little bit of water to it just to make it smoother. Um, otherwise, it takes forever to get the paint on. But you are going to do this one until he is completely covered in that color. And then you're gonna let him set aside and you're gonna let him dry. Don't get into the next stage until he is completely dry. Otherwise, you're gonna get just like a mush of colors. But as you can see, look, it doesn't matter what your clay color is because you're going to be painting all over it. So this next stage, I'm adding um, sort of a mix of a raw umber, that burnt umber, and just like just a touch of black, and I'm mixing it and adding lots of water. And then I am um, basically painting it all over. But what I'm doing is I'm also going to take um, a pa paper towel and wipe off the excess. So what I'm actually trying to do here is get into those cracks and crevices that we've created with our nails. So this is going to be create those dark shadows um, to really make those that detail more emphasized. Um, so that's why, yeah, you do want it quite, not really watery, but enough where it just automatically gets into those little cracks. And then as you do, you just sort of wipe off bits and pieces with your paper towel. And you're gonna do that for the whole body. And then you're gonna let it dry. So see, you can see all the detail. And look, you might find that you prefer a darker color for your mandrake. Um, I've actually got different ones. I've got ones who are like really dark, almost like a mission brown for my mandrakes. And I've actually gone in and done more black as my shadows. Um, here I am taking a little bit of a black um, and a smaller paintbrush and just getting those really dark, dark areas. So the nostril areas, the mouth, and the, um, the eye parts as well. Again, you're gonna let that dry, just that way you aren't going to be mixing it in with any other colors. All right, then I'm grabbing sort of a, that burnt umber, raw umber, and I'm just kind of mixing it in, um, just so those roots um, and so on just sort of all blend. Finally, I'm gonna do a highlight. So again, make sure it's all dry. You're gonna take a sort of like um, an ashy yellow um, and probably the raw umber, and all I've taken, as you can see, I've actually used a big paintbrush. I've mixed this onto baking paper, um, and then I've dabbed it, and then I've brushed some of it off so you've got a dry paint. So make sure your paintbrush isn't damp. 
has to be dry. And what I'm doing is I'm just streaking it across so it hits some of those, um, because the way you've um, made it, it's not gonna be a flat surface. So it's just gonna grab some of those highlights and just add a little bit more depth. Especially on his face, you're gonna be hitting sort of the, the forehead area, the tops of his eyes, his nose, his cheekbones, so basically where light would normally hit, that's where you're wanting to add that um, extra highlights for his face. Finally, the foliage. So this is where you're just gonna pop them in. As I said, I've used ferns, um, but some of my original mandrakes have more of a oval shaped leaf that probably looks a bit more like the mandrakes that they used um, in the films. Um, but I find this adds a nice um, height and depth and whatever, but I've also mixed and matched as well. And you know what? It comes down to what you can find. Finally, I got a great big pot um, just from my hardware store to plunk them into and I just found, I kind of just made this up, I found someone's graphics mandrakes, um, so I, I can't really share it because it's not my illustrations, um, but you know you can just, I'm sure there's lots of free signage online that you can use. Uh, cut that out, stick that onto your pot and you have a mandrake. So with that I will show you the final and I will also show you some of my other originals. Um, that way you can see the comparison and the different faces. <laughs> All right, so here is my big grumpy mandrake who looks like he's screaming. The only thing I'm missing are my earmuffs. Um, as I said, I made him much larger than when I made my other ones, just so I could show you the detail a whole lot easier when I was filming. This is my original mandrake. Now, let's see if we can make space for all of them. I'll be honest, he is still my favorite. Um, I probably did the most time consuming when it came to getting his nose right and his face, um, and a little face I could love. Um, anyways, he's the guy who sits most on my shelf. As you can see, um, I've used wire, so his arms curve a little bit more. Now, the other thing I should mention as well is um, with this guy, what I did do differently is I used some brown tissue paper. Um, you can also use black and just paint on top of it but from his arm all the way down, that's actually just tissue paper. So if you're wanting an alternative or you're, you've run out of clay or you don't want to use clay, um, you can paper mache. Um, it is a little bit harder, and I would definitely say use clay for his face because you're wanting to sculpt it. But you know, the rest of the body, and especially as you're going further down, especially if you're potting, popping him in a pot, you really aren't going to see him that much. What other little guys do we have? Did I mention I made a few? <laughs> So a few years ago, we had a library event that it ended up not going through, but I made two, four, six, maybe eight mandrakes. Um, and he's one of them. He's one of the smaller ones. But as you can see, that's another style of mandrake. So look, as you can see, you can make your mandrakes look however you like. Give it a shot. I mean, it's always good fun um, playing with clay anyways, and you never know, you might surprise yourself. I would definitely love to see any photos you take. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad, but I just love knowing that you guys are just having fun and being creative and at least trying to make your own mandrake. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I will be doing another video soon. Definitely leave your comments below of what you're wanting to see next. I am gonna be doing a mix of recipes and crafts, and I've got a few ideas and uh, my to-do list is growing thanks to you guys um, and it will all be made at some point. Anyways, I'm starting to ramble now so I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you're wanting to see any slower detail of these mandrakes, let me know and I can always make that available for you. Um, yeah, with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.